Look, I'm not green. It's because I left my makeup kit on a train, so I've had to kind of make do. Hi there. Let me get straight to the point. I am sick and fucking tired of this happiness bullshit. Okay, this cheap charity with which so many people approach the world that functions as a thin and tacky foil veneer for the selfish egoism that lies beneath it. Okay, people are too concerned with doing good without thinking about what good is and they don't have the willpower to follow through with the often unpleasant and occasionally grisly realities that are required to meaningfully carry out good intentions in a profoundly sick world. This leaves an utterly lamentable gap between expressed intentions and realised results. Oh, but I meant well all too often means that you are too lazy to do well. Also, simplicity and pragmatism are used in a similar way. People want to do things simply because they're all way, they're way more concerned with handing out remedies and throwing out solutions than they want the, than actually mustering the cojones to stare the problem in the face. Anyone who wants to have a life of any sort of integrity needs to recognise that in this capitalist world of winners and losers, uh, that we're just never going to all be happy at the same time. Oh, but we can just get into a system of exchange, of trade and conversation, and we can eventually just keep doing this until we realise that really, we're all the same. When this is underpinned with exclusive conceptions of property, that is basically called legitimised greed of like, mine, Yours, yours is often something that I want to become mine, and if but if you were to take something from mine and make it yours, oh, that would be bad. Like trying to come up with a way which everyone's going to be happy under this is a blatant contradiction in terms. It's because within capitalism we understand everything in this kind of like commodity logic. Like this is my happiness, and it is stable, and it, it requires these points, and then your happiness is your other stable. We've got a right to these things, because we have a right to property, so we have a right to happiness, and we have a right to these things that we can conceptualise in stable form. Right this, right that, right the other. It all just often ends up just being really wrong. Anyone who says, oh, I just want everyone to be happy is either lying or deluded. Like, what about the EDL and the BNP? What about Vladimir Putin? What about the KKK? What about the anarcho-vegans? Or the separatist radical feminists? Leninist revolutionaries? A few red Indians left on their Native American reserve? And what about the Flat Earth Society or the Illuminati conspiracy theorists? And what about what about the queer gender terrorists, okay? All of these people's happiness would involve a total, like, radical reshake up of the current sim like physical and symbolic order as well. Oh well I don't want them to be happy. I mean like I only want I only want people's happiness that's gonna make like everyone else happy which is an entirely different matter. That's not saying I want happiness for everyone. That oh but then I want the greatest happiness for the greatest majority of people. You start to actually see how it's how these big all encompassing ideas actually begin to become divisive. The point is that the world is so vast and full of conflicting peoples that we can only ever talk about one small pocket or sphere of activity at one particular time. Basically, things like everyone can sort of begin to mean something in a very small social universe. However, this is always conditioned by its relation to the wider social cosmos, so this universal is always an unstable one. Okay, but it's only unstable if you inspect it. And this it's where the problem lies. If something is like, if something's only unstable on inspection and everyone's stubbornly refusing to inspect, like inspect it or just to rock the boat or shake things up, then it's just gonna seem like it's a sane, sensible, nice, no, like nice thing that, you know, we all just need or do. Like for example, in the 1950s, the status of homosexuality is a mental health disorder. I mean, it was just something that just like, you know, why would you, yeah, why would you bother with that? You know, just like there's some weird perverts out out there who just do incredibly unnatural things and they're ill or it's a crime or whatever I don't know I can't remember the exact dates of when th everything got changed that's a poor off-the-cuff example just showing how you actually work these things out because some people don't seem to apply theoretical concepts to their everyday life because they've got no sense of critical reflection whatsoever the idea that we can all be happy and get along all the time is such an insanely gross case of intellectual incompetence as to be considered obscene okay and no more no more should we tolerate this frightful sham of an ethos but most of all what we should do is we should do away with our fear of disagreements it's perfectly possible to reach some sort of like fairly amicable compromise that is livable with, okay, but only once the conflict is recognised. When you're deluding yourself that conflict doesn't exist, then this nasty little contradiction between what you're telling yourself and what's actually going on begins to worm away behind the eyes until it manifests itself as a profoundly revolting ugliness that can only result from the deluded quest for beauty. It's only by, like, uh, like examining, accepting and acknowledging 
our imperfections and our flaws and our failures that we can like acknowledge that we can we can find some sort of resolution to them in which we can move forward to the next kind of stage. If we refuse them then we anchor a little bitter piece of ourselves in the past that always drags us back to that place again and again and again, the exact place that we want to get away from. What refusing to acknowledge it will bring us back to. And it's own, especially in contemporary liberal society, because I can only talk about one sphere of activity at a time, because the world's just too big. Okay, but I would say it's actually the pursuit of an authentic, universal happiness for everyone, which is actually the very thing that is depriving so many people from enjoying. And I've been dealing with some shit recently for some people who aren't in touch with their emotions, but I am in touch with mine, and they get angry about it, because they can't accept the fact that they don't like me. Whereas, I'm perfectly at peace with the fact that I don't like them, allowing me to move past this but they're still fuckers. To fake or to hate is never a question.